What's going on everybody, King of Dragons 5000 here, coming at you with another figure review. Today we'll be having a look at the Mattel DC Comics Multiverse KG Beast, part of the Killer Croc Collection Connect series. Here we do have KG Beast in the packaging. What we're going to do now is take a little break, get him opened up, and then we'll have a better look at the KG Beast. Stay tuned everyone. And so here we have a look at KG Beast. Now before we have a look at the figure, let's actually take a look at what he comes with. KG Beast does come with the head and lower torso of Killer Croc, which we'll have a better look at when he's all put together. As far as accessories for KG Beast goes, he does come with two knives, which do fit into his holsters on his ankles, and you can put it into his right hand. He also does come with a bigger knife that does fit into his arm cannon, and it does fit in his hand if you want him holding it. And then he also does come with the tip of his gun. I don't know why you would want to have this removed. I just think it's a little silly, but that's neither here nor there. Other than that, KG Beast doesn't really come with anything else. Uh, I think shurikens would have been a nice little thing because he does have them along his belt. So what we're going to do now is actually take a closer look at the KG Beast. And so here we have a closer look at KG Beast. And this is one figure I never thought Mattel would ever get around to making, so I'm really glad I have a KG Beast in my collection. Taking a look at the figure, we can see his mask is really well done. One thing I do like is that you really can't see his mouth or his nose. I do like the fact that it looks like fabric is covering that up. I really do like the wrinkles around his brow that does add a little bit of character. And the sculpt work on his mask is pretty good for the most part and is painted cleanly. I do like the white eyes just piercing through the black. You can see his ears are also sculpted. We have some back detailing on his mask, although I think this should be painted. If I'm not mistaken, KG Beast's mask is painted on both sides, so that looks like an error on Mattel's part. As far as his costume goes, it looks pretty much like he does in comics right now. You can see he does have the three little bars right here, which they are painted really well in this really good burgundy color. A little bit of paint error on mine, but it's not a big deal. I do like the sculpt work on his vest. It does look like it's a bulletproof material. We do have some studs up here on his traps. Taking a look on the back, you can see more of that Kevlar diamond weave pattern. We have some more of those burgundy stripes. We have some shurikens that go all along his belt, and you can see he does have two pouches, one on the left side and one on the right side, which the little button is actually painted, so that's something I wasn't expecting Mattel to do. Having a look at his right arm, we can see he's it's pretty bare, no details. I would have liked to see some veins on here because he's a pretty beefy guy, so I'm surprised there's no veins. One thing I do want to point out is the discoloration between his forearm and his elbow, or his bicep right here. You can tell this is flesh-colored plastic and this is flesh-toned paint. It's really noticeable. Now something I do want to point out about his hands is that we have seen this particular hand before. This is actually Lobo's hand. Um, you can actually see his fingerless gloves where they just decided to cast it all in a black. I don't know why they just didn't retool this so that the fingerless part of the gloves is omitted, but uh, what are you going to do about it? I do like the studs and the buckle is nicely painted. Having a look at his left arm, you can see he has that KG Beast tattoo going down all the way to his arm cannon, which they did a really good job on his arm cannon. Now, I do have it with a knife right here, which it can peg out if you really want to. It's a little bit st stiff, and it's not the easiest fit, mainly because this is soft plastic. This is hard plastic. You don't put soft plastic pegs into hard plastic. Pa plastic holes it just doesn't really work again the m muzzle of his gun does come out so I guess you can use it as a missile if you really wanted to he is wearing black tights and they did a really good job with the sculpt work on his pants you can see all the wrinkles and folds they do look really good having a look at his boots you can see the sheaths that house the knives, and again, the knives are removable if you want to have him wielding one or another figure wielding a knife. I just don't like this seam line going down the middle. I don't know why they didn't have the seam lines right here on the side. That would have made it 
much better, but the seam lights down the middle, it is a little bit of a issue because it looks pretty ugly. We do get that same pattern with the three bars, just not on the back of his boots, unfortunately. And you can see there is some red paint that shouldn't really be there. I don't know why it's even there. And then standard black boots with some treads on them, which I really do like the fact that he has treads on his boots. Other than that, there's not much more to say about the KG Beast. So what we're going to do now is actually take a closer look and compare them to other figures you may have in your collection. And so here we have KG Beast posed next to a Marvel Legends Cyclops and a DC Multiverse Superman. And finally, here we have KG Beast posed next to a WWE Elite Scale figure and a Mezco 112th Collective Popeye the Sailor Man. So with the comparisons out of the way, let's actually have a look at KG Beast's articulation. He does have a ball joint in the head, which does give him a generous range going up and a really nice range going down, and that's because it's on a hinge. Oh wow, I didn't even notice that his neck is on a hinge. It was just kind of stiff on mine, and I really wasn't expecting it to have a hinge, so that's pretty good. Uh, we do have very slight head tilt, so it's non-existent. His head does turn left and right, a little bit hindered by his suit right here which is a soft overlay arms do go out to the side only to about there he has some pretty chunky arms does a full 360 swivel at the bicep has a single bend in the elbow his wrist does have a swivel and an in and out hinge so that works pretty good left arm we do have a swivel right here on his arm cannon so there is that so you can actually have that pose we do have an ab crunch in his torso, which does go back to about that far. Goes forward about this far, and it actually surprisingly works well, despite the fact he has this rubber overlay on his torso, so that's pretty co cool. His lower torso is, of course, a rubbery overlay as well, so his legs do kick forward only to about there. Not the best range we've seen. They do kick back only to about that far, again, due to that overlay. They do go out to the side. All the way, but his he has a lot of hindrance right here in his torso because you can see the utility belt does push his leg down. Does it do it on this side? Not so much, but it still does it. We do have a thigh swivel, but they didn't engineer it all too well, so it does little to nothing. Single bend in the knee works fine. He has a hinge in the ankle, which goes back and forward. Mine is a little bit loose on the left side. On the right side, it is perfectly good. And then we have forward-facing pin for rocker ankle. So overall, a really impressive figure by Mattel. So what we're going to do now is actually get him posed for my final thoughts, and then we'll wrap up this review. And so here we have KG Beast posed for my final thoughts. Overall, Mattel did a really good job with this figure. This is actually one figure I would never expected Mattel to tackle, seeing as how KG Beast isn't really that well known, but... Again, I'm happy that I have one in my collection, especially seeing as how he looks like he fits right in with the Suicide Squad. Or you can have him fighting Batman, so that's a really good thing. Now, I did find my KG Beast as well as the rest of the Killer Croc wave at Walmart, and I have seen these guys starting to pop up at Walmart at the time I'm making this video. He will run you about $20 at Walmart, but I'm pretty sure Target will start carrying these soon. Or you can order your set off Big Bad Toy Store, depending on... You, if you just want KG Beast, good luck finding him in stores. Or if you want the entire case, go ahead and order one from Big Bad Toy Store. With that being said, guys, I'm King of Dragons 5000. Don't forget to like this video, leave a comment, subscribe to my channel, go check out all my other action figure reviews, as well as all my other DC Multiverse videos. Hopefully you find them informative. As always, if there's a figure you would like to see me review, let me know down in the comments, and if it's in my collection, I'll definitely have a look at it. While you're at it, check out my Instagram account for new and exciting action figure photos and ring that bell to be notified every time I upload a video. Even if you're subscribed, ring that bell because you don't want to miss out on any of my videos. Until next time, guys, I'll see you later. Take care, everyone.